around us, we have got huge amounts of resources for, um, for biogas. I know that everybody will tell you, if you ask anybody, where do you, got, where do you get biogas from? Everyone will say cow dung. Now that is old school. Today we can make biogas out of anything and everything. Right now we are in Dunga Beach, we are making it out of this menace plant called water hyacinth. Water hyacinth that is perceived to be a real pain in the neck, um, a nuisance to the lake and even perceived to be a pollutant, it's actually a blessing in disguise. What it's doing, it is cleaning the water. It is a water filter. It is sucking up the nutrients uh, from the water. Um, the water hyacinth thrives in dirty water. If you see water hyacinth in your pond or in your lake or in your dam on your farm, it's an indicator that your water is pollutant. It's polluted. You shouldn't be removing it. You should let it clean the water. We should be embracing it. We should be looking at, look at all of the positive traits of it. It's pest resistant. It's there all year round. It's gonna clean the water. It'll grow until the water's clean and then it stops growing because it's got nothing to eat. So it just stops growing. And so if you harvest it and take it out again, it will regrow when the water gets dirty again. So it, it, you can stabilize it. You can have a very, very sustainable source of energy um, in all the water bodies. Um, this system can run um, on about a ton of uh, waste per day. We have um, a team of uh, youths that we hired from here um, who basically go out, we have a little scoot, a little, a little boat. They go out and they harvest the water hyacinth. So they will bring in about half of a ton of water hyacinth um, that then comes and it's ground using a grinding machine. Um, I like to say that God gave us teeth to chew before we swallow. So the digester is a stomach. So you want to grind up whatever it is you're feeding into the digester. At the same time, we have um, uh, buckets that bins that we supply to all of the restaurants uh, within Dunga and they pile up all of their organic material that was ending up on the beach and, and causing a huge stench and we grind that as well and so that goes into the digester as well. The food remains we shred with the, together with the water acid and uh, we slurify that yard water in a ratio of one to one into the system then you feed. If you install the system for the first time you feed in cow dung to get the right bacteria for the digestion of what you feed. Uh, that is anaerobic bacteria. When you uh, have that in the system, then you now have everything in good place. Now what you have just be feeding every day or uh, regularly so that you have what the bacteria can feed on. These are um, cross-flow digesters. Uh, this particular model is an M50 and it has got seven chambers. So it's like seven digesters, one after the other. So what you feed to the first one displaces into the second one, into the third one, and eventually displaces uh, out of the last one. Uh, the fourth stage, that is the methanogenesis stage now. The hydrogen gas is being consumed. Then the acetates or acetic acids converted to methane gas, which you write as a, a CH4 in the chemical formulas. Then you also have hydrogen sulfate as a rare gas, which you find in the process. You also get uh, carbon dioxide being produced, but those are in small quantities. The highest composition is methane, which is around 8 to 90 percent in the mixture. Uh, the rest are just in small quantities. After production of uh, methane gas, which is the main gas now in the process, uh, you collect it on top of the system. Uh, that's uh, the balloons you can see on top of the system across. After the collection now, the gas can be used for various purposes. Domestic systems also run on this. So we can have, here in Dunga, we have more than 50 domestic systems uh, running. Um, so we can have domestic as well as commercial uh, biogas running, running on the water asset. So the biogas we use for cooking, we connect the ladies who are defrying fish along the, along the beach. So we connect them onto the gas so that they can use a very cheap and clean uh, 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 energy. We have um, Oceanale radio station uh, directly from the digester straight into their kitchen. Um, they're using the gas. Um, we're looking at people who are doing commercial cooking, uh, especially with uh, pressure cookers, uh, so that we can speed up uh, um, their cooking. Uh, we're also looking at how to value to reduce post-harvest losses of fruit and vegetables. So we're setting up dryers for fruits and vegetables as well, uh, just to demonstrate that, you know, um, 
things don't have to go to waste because there's no one to eat them right now. Once they're dry, they can last for months. Tangu nipatie burgers ni monitor for the moja kubwa sana. Kitu ya kwanza eh kuni sikati. Ya pili mafuta ta sinunui. Makasi nunui. Kwa pande ya biogas naona yanisaidia sana kwa sababu hakuna gharama inatumia. Inatumia zero sababu ni kinyasi ya ngombe inayowekwa au icin e folds zinaweka kwa kule ishasiagwa na inatoa gas kwa hivyo unatumia zero na inanipa nafu sana maana ile pesa ningetumia hapo sasa natumia kwa vitu vingine inanisaidia sana tangu ba, nipate biogas naona kama nimepata gharama inakuwa naona maisha yamekuwa nafu kwangu Nashukuru sana ile kampuni ile introduce sisi kwa kupika hiyo. Sasa hii hapa napika chai, napika lunch na hii. Na piga pia sapa hapa. Japati nikitaka. Sasa hii ni rahisi sana inisumbui. Chukua hiyo pan na kuweka. Kaika kitoko imeiba. Hata sisumbukani kama watu sasa for example mvue kinyesha ndio iko shida kubwa, kubwa kabisa. Sababu kurokota kuni ni baridi. Pata makabe imeongezeka saa hii 100 mkebe. So mi na shukuru sana. Naona hii kazi ime, hiyo kazi imeniokoa bali pakubwa sana. Kazi inatuma maisha inakuwa rais. Ilingana na venye mimi nimekaa na hii kazi muda yenye imekuwa nayo upande wa chakula pia nanisaidia. Ma ma kaudang sake zenye zinatokanga hapo ndani. Kwa na mwaka kwa mboga niko na mboga kubwa kubwa hapa nyuma ujaamuliko kasiona. Mm. Ngeonako hizo mboga simetoka kwa hiyo hiyo bio gas hiyo waste yake. Alafu pia niko na mandisi hapo ni safi ila hakuna. Sababu inatumia hiyo hiyo nini ya waste ya hiyo bio gas. Kwa hivyo naimisa watu wengi wawaachane na kusukulika na maneno ya kuni na maoshi moshi hapo watumie gas. Gas ni kitu rahisi tena haichomi venye ordinary gas hii ya hiyo kasi ya kawaida iko tofauti haina risking ya mtu kusekuo via oh ndaungua a ah. inaweza iput off tena haishuti kama ile ya kawaida kila wakati mm mimi naona hii ni simple hata kama si kusoma si kufanya nini naweza naweza cooperate kufungua tu kujua tu kuput off put on hiyo tu iko simple it's much easier to place your biogas plant directly in the middle of the consumers and then pipe the gas to them at low pressure. It's extremely low tech. Uh, actually, the, the gas line has no pressure. The consumer has got a vacuum pump or a suction pump that sucks the gas down the line and then pressurizes it to his stove. So the, the pressure in the gas lines is a dead pressure. If you were to make a hole in the gas line and somebody's using the gas somewhere, instead of gas coming out of the hole you'd be sucking air into the hole you wouldn't actually have uh, you wouldn't be polluting at all um, so the gas is extremely safe uh, for that because the, the the pressure is so low so when you burn the gas you produce water and carbon dioxide which are both completely inert and uh, therefore extremely safe for, for users you can use it indoors and whatever without the without any releasing any poisonous gases but it also means that if there is a leak in your system the it will the the gas will rise up and find its way out of the ventilation and rise up into the space it won't fill in your house like lpg or butane propane will fill up in your house and then as soon as there's a spark somewhere it'll blow your roof off the be next biggest advantage is not just the gas but all of those nutrients and minerals that are in the water that have now been sucked into the plant are now available in your by a fertilizer that comes out of your biogas digester as pure rich organic fertilizer um, the fertilizer that comes out of our digester or the bio a lot of people call it bio slurry is not a slurry it's liquid um, everything that goes into the digester completely dissolves and so what's coming out is pure water water consistency that can now be moved on to the farmers who are along the river banks and everything so instead of using chemicals that are destroying our soils we can use this organic fertilizer. Now, not only is it a fertilizer, it's also an absolutely fantastic insect repellent. It's non-poisonous. It doesn't kill anything, but you will see your plants will be completely free of all of the pests. Um, so, because it's a liquid and we're trying to sell it to farmers to use, the farmers are not 
very familiar with the liquid fertilizer. They are they like dry granular fertilizer in a, in a sack form. So we're having big challenges trying to get them onto the uh, liquid fertilizer um, train. So we are setting up demo farms um, where we are practicing um, climate smart regenerative agriculture using drip irrigation on cone gardens. So we're getting very, very high yields in a very, very small space. Um, and then we're going to be relying on that copycat uh, um, effect where people will be able to come and see what we're doing so that we're going to be, oh, we are open to the public. And uh, they'll, be, they'll, be, they'll see how simple it is and hopefully they'll want to replicate on their farms um, and then hopefully we will, will then be able to sell them the fertilizer and the compost uh, for you know, keeping the, the soil alive in their vertical gardens. Um, you can also harvest these plants and just make compost and you get nutrients. You just, you still use them, you still, you just, you just don't get the, the energy component. Um, a lot of these plants, they taste bitter, which actually means they're very good for something. What comes out of our digesters, because we're not putting any human waste or any animal waste into them, what comes out is digested human food or digested water hyacinth in this case, which means that that too can be fed directly to animals as an animal feed supplement. So there's numerous resources right on our doorstep um, that can make the biogas, that can give you your nutrients for your farms, your insect repellents are there. You can go 100% organic and regenerative agriculture um, just by looking at these, uh, these pests from the other side of the fence. Wherever there is humans, there is waste. Wherever there's waste, there is biogas. Biogas potential, there is fertilizer potential. Instead of trying to move the waste out of town and then move the gas back into town, set up the digester in town and just move the waste to the digester and then just turn it into your value add, turn it into fertilizer. Move the fertilizer out of town and use the gas in town to offset the charcoal. Kisumu uh, County, they really like the technology. We've got a setup here in Dunga Beach. We have another setup in, um, in Ahero uh, where we're doing the same. In Ahero, we actually set up within the county offices. In the beginning, they were very, very skeptical that you're putting a biogas digester behind, beside a government office. It's going to be smelly, it's going to be this, it's going to be that. Um, our site is the cleanest piece of land in, um, in Ahero. So we are looking for other counties to now come on board and say, I want this on my beaches. Um, you know, how much will it cost? We'll put them in, we'll train the people how to use them, train them how to harvest the hyacinth, train them on how to, uh, to use the gas, how to modify stoves, how to make biogas stoves. Uh, we would hope that they would now be able to just see that this decentralized waste management makes far, far more sense than centralized. Because we are not just managing the waste, organic waste, we're managing all of the waste in totality, which includes the plastics, the metals, the glass, the diapers, the ladies' pads, everything. Um, so by the time we're done with um, sorting the waste, because we want the organic, we've sorted everything else. And then we are stockpiling um, all of the other items for the mainstream recyclers, um, which means that there's nothing, absolutely nothing left over to go to a dump site or to go to a landfill. We're already exporting to Zimbabwe, we're already exporting to Zambia, we're already exporting to, to countries in West Africa. The most amazing thing is we've just got an order from Switzerland to, to export digester to Switzerland. Switzerland are being affected by the, um, by the Ukraine war because they, they rely on natural gas from there. So they've got generators that run on natural gas. Now biogas is natural gas. They've got, they've got waste, they've got animals, they've got um, organic waste. So they want our digesters because they're so simple to... So this is going to be the first time we're going to have not north-south technology transfer or south-south technology transfer. It's south-north technology transfer. So we're very, we're very happy that we are, you know, I think we're leading in the biogas space of being the first developing country to export uh, de a technology developed in the developing country to uh, a first world country, a developed country.